This is a comparison video for the pumps that Van Watt favours, uh, starting with the little peristaltic pump here. So this is a low flow sampling pump. Uh, it has uh, a flow rate capability of uh, between 0 and 2.2 litres per minute. Um, uh, it's got a variable speed drive. It also has a, a constant torque, uh, so it's actually quite easy to dial in uh, the speed that you want. Um, the, uh, it has a maximum uh, lift of about nine and a half meters uh, because it's ostensibly a vacuum pump so uh, the theoretical maximum would be about 10.3 meters but nine nine and a half meters is the theoretical maximum lift so that is from that is the uh, depth to groundwater so it can lift water from as far down as nine and a half meters below uh, ground level however if that um, head lift is less than nine and a half meters you can still sample much deeper than that so the uh, tubing can go down to hundreds of meters uh, and you can sample down at those horizons provided uh, that depth to water uh, is no more than nine and a half meters um, so the uh, limitation for the pump is nine and a half meters the other limitation is uh, that it is not ideal for uh, VOC sampling if you have dissolved gases or dissolved methane for example in um, your water sample uh, this is ostensibly a, a vacuum pump it will pull a vacuum and if that lift is too uh, is too great then it will boil off the water and of course uh, that starts with uh, the volatiles uh, so bear that in mind having said that many many environmental consultants still prefer to use the peristaltic pump uh, in most conditions where where they're allowed because it is an easy pump to use and it yields very repeatable results so those VOC losses can be quantified to a degree and they can be uh, allowed for uh, with repeated uh, sampling incidentally um, something else which is uh, potentially quite useful with a pump like this is that uh, you can dedicate tubing to a monitoring well so because it's a surface operated pump uh, tubing can be dedicated to a well uh, and that will save you from having to uh, use and use and, uh, and throw away each time uh, uh, depending of course on what you're sampling and for and whether your uh, methodology will allow that now moving on uh, also low flow sampling so where uh, the depth to groundwater may be uh, greater than nine and a half meters uh, your next uh, low flow option would be something like this pump here so this is uh, these are bladder pumps and this is the compressor uh, for the pump so this is a battery operated compressor it can uh, pressurize up to about 100 psi which should be enough for about 60 meters of lift uh, now the way these pumps work um, okay so uh, there is a bladder inside of here okay so there's a you can hear there's a check valve in there uh, so water in and the water goes into this portion here inside the bladder so natural water pressure fills this up and then uh, air is transported down through a tube and that air sits in between the bladder and the wall of the uh, pump and so it actually squeezes the bladder so no air gets into contact with the sample it squeezes the bladder and that water uh, comes out of the next uh, hose bar up here uh, so that's great for VOC sampling uh, because you're pushing the sample back up so you don't get any uh, VOC losses that's very handy uh, but it does limit the pump uh, so with 100 psi it limits the pump down to 60 meters regardless of the depth to groundwater because uh, the um, pump has to overcome uh, the air pressure if you even if you've got 10 meters uh, only 10 meters of uh, uh, depth to groundwater uh, if this is down at 60 meters you've got to push the air all the way down uh, inside it um, the volume of this pump is about 130 mil and typically you'll get about three cycles per minute of filling 
natural filling and compressing um, uh, for the pump, so uh, 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 three cycles a minute. Um, there is also, so this is a 44 millimeter pump, this one here, 22 millimeter, uh, and it's got a tiny uh, bladder inside it, so that's only 29 milliliters uh, volume, uh, but again, at, at, th at a approximately three cycles per minute, depending on the conditions. Uh, so no VOC losses, but quite an awkward pump to use. Uh, and certainly uh, if you're trying to uh, repeat um, sampling, or, or and, and particularly if you've got different uh, staff using this pump, the results uh, have the potential to be variable because of how, uh, how tricky it is to use. When you get used to it, um, uh, it gets a, bit, a little bit easier. As far as dedicating pumps to a well is concerned, that is possible. So this you could leave at the bottom of a well with the tubing. You can have this dedicated and it will make your sampling process much easier. But of course, um, there is, this is an expense that you have to leave down there. Um, if you did that, you may consider using a Teflon bladder uh, or, and or Teflon tubing um, uh, to extend the life of the of the plastic. Obviously, if you're looking at PFAS sampling, that is not going to be uh, uh, not going to be a um, uh, an option for you. Speaking of PFAS, uh, with the peristaltic pump, uh, the tubing that is used is uh, silicon tubing. Typically, you'll see that it has some sort of chalky powder on it. That's talc powder. Uh, uh, so that is um, permitted. Um, if you have uh, access to high density polyethylene tubing for uh, sampling, that can be used for PFAS sampling, either that or you use only silicon tubing all the way down to the bottom of the monitoring well. So now moving on uh, to the high flow pumps. So we've got the GeoSub pump and the MP1 pump. Starting with the MP1 pump, this is the only pump of this diameter that will high flow uh, purge at low, at really low depths. So down to a maximum of 90 meters and a maximum flow rate uh, at one meter of uh, about 36 liters per minute. Um, uh, there is another video c comparing these two, uh, these two pumps, so I'll keep this short, but uh, one fundamental limitation with this is the heat that it generates, so be aware that, um, in fact, and in fact both of these pumps generate a, a, a heat to a degree, this, the GeoSub less so, but certainly the MP1 can generate quite a lot of heat and has the potential to uh, cook your um, uh, water sample, so be aware of that. Uh, the Geo Sub uh, runs much cooler, so uh, perhaps less of an issue there. Um, a maximum lift of uh, 60 meters and a maximum flow rate at one meter of about 16 liters per minute.